welcome to Discourse Digital. We're taking a look on how to create a quick landing page using Odoo where you can capture client information or prospect information and send it directly to your CRM. So let's get started. This process shouldn't take us more than 20 minutes and should create an exceptionally performant and beautiful landing page. Let's take a look at what we're creating first. For a recent campaign of mine, I created a landing page in conjunction with one of my clients, Brand Lighting. And for this promotion, we're giving away a free sign up to odoo.com along with a free website setup. And if we scroll down the page, we can see that I have my lead capture form at the top left. And as I go down, I have more informational blocks as well as some links outbound and to the top of the page. So let's see how we can quickly create this web page using Odoo's website builder. First, we'll just go into our Odoo instance, and when we're logged in, we'll go into new in the top right hand corner. From here, we'll select page, and we'll remove the add to menu page because I just want this to be a freestanding landing page with no links within the natural hierarchy of my website. So this is my first landing page and I'm going to go to create. Once I'm on this page, I need to just drag and drop components into the website page to build it out. So at the first, we want this big kind of splash screen with the lead capture form, a countdown timer, and some text. So we can do that quickly and easily by selecting the banner, dragging and dropping. We'll go and select the image and to, in the right hand side, go to Image, Replace. I'm going to select this image from my repository. And I want it to take up the whole page, so under Height, I'll click 100%. Now I want a contact form page here. And hopefully that makes it easier to see things right now. So I want a contact form page here, and I'm going to remove this button by selecting it and just backspace. Once I have this, I can go to blocks on the right hand side. In the search bar, I can type form and then drag and drop into position. So I almost have everything set up here. The next thing I want is my countdown timer, and I can just go search for that over here Ah, there it is. I'm going to drag and drop that over. All right, so it's starting to look good. Now, when you select an element, you'll see these handlebars at the top and bottom with up, down arrows. If I click and drag it up, I'll remove the padding from both the top and bottom to make the whole unit closer together. Now, I wanted to say this in the text, so I'll go and copy and paste my header. And it looks a little big, so I'm going to actually select the font size here. Ah, that's better. My text I need to replace, and I'm just going to replace it with the copy and paste text from over here. Now I'm missing the highlight on there, so I can just go and highlight this, and in my right-hand panel next to my font color, I'll find the highlight color. I'll go and select yellow to make it stand out. Next, I want my timer to be set a little bit differently. I want it to expire at the first of next month. So I'll go and set seven, oops, zero seven as my day, or as my month, I'm sorry. And now from here, I can also change what it does at the end, whether it redirects to another web page or shows a message and keeps the countdown or hides it, as well as I can choose the size. So I'm gonna select medium, and I'm going to leave the color and the format the same. Next is my lead form. Now, if you're only using the website module, the lead form will send an email to whatever email you enter in the recipient email. But since I use the complete ERP system to manage all my leads, I'm going to send this to my system as an opportunity. That way, when they come in as leads, Every day I can look at the leads list and decide which opportunities I'm going to move forward. I can also centralize all my communications with that client with inside the portal in the CRM so that I can find easy access to information, send invoices or quotes easily, 
and just generally follow up with scheduled tasks. So let's go ahead and change this from capturing and sending an email to creating an opportunity. And we just have to go into action and create an opportunity. I'm going to assign a sales team and the salesperson. And on success, I'm going to show a message. If I click the little I to the show message, you'll see the message that's showing. And if I go and edit it, I can say thank you for your interest and said so thank you for your feedback. Now, anytime that someone submits this, this page, you'll be showing this particular message. So let's go ahead and unclick the I, and let's see what other fields we have. So the subject, we know why this subject is coming in. Let's add a default value and say new website inquiry. And we can just leave that as it is. On the question, instead of a question, this is more a message. And we want the company name, the email, and the phone number to be required. So we'll select phone number, scroll down on the right-hand side, and select required. And you'll notice a little asterisk shows up to the right of all the required fields, which in this case is every field. So I don't think the messages really should be required. I'll click this field and then unclick required. Oh, it's starting to look great. So I have my first section. I'm going to go ahead and save that. If I don't save, I could lose all my progress so far. So let's go ahead and back up to edit and add our next section. If we go back to the page that I'm using, you'll see that we have an image and some text to the right for the next section. So let's go ahead and add that. That's real easy. We just come over here to the text and image section, drag and drop to the left. We get this pre-formatted section that we're going to reduce the padding on. We're also going to remove this wave background by going up to the background and removing the shape. Next, we'll replace the image by double clicking on it and selecting our next image. We'll edit the text by just copying and pasting. And you'll notice these headers are formatted to match your theme. You can change the colors of them, obviously, but they do a pretty good job. I want to remove this link. Again, I'm just going to select it, hit backspace twice, and it's gone. All right, so that's my second section. I'm going to raise that up a little bit. And now my next section is actually a custom embedded HTML section. Before that, I have a header section, and we'll see how to put these two together to create a much more dynamic page using information that I might have written for myself or found online or wanted to embed an embed code from a video URL or some other embed location. We'll go over to our landing page and select blocks. And in the search bar, we'll type embed, and the embed code comes up. I'm using Odoo 15 in this instance, and everything Odoo 15 and above has the embed code as a website widget. We'll drag and drop that over here. Ah, no, it went into the wrong place. So I can grab the six point handle here and drag it down to the right place. Now, before I do that, I had a header that I wanted to put in here. And see, I have heading title, and I'll drag and drop that over top. All right, so next thing, I'm just going to copy and paste my heading. And you'll see it doesn't match. So we'll go over to background, and we'll select the white background. And we'll select the title header and reduce the size. You'll see the juxtaposition is it's already justified center, so we don't need to do that. <clears throat> we have a tagline underneath or further information in this point, in this case. And I'm just going to copy and paste that there. I'm going to reduce the padding on the bottom and a little bit on the top. And then I'm going to click my HTML code and then go to the right-hand section and click Edit. I now have a section where I can edit my HTML. 
and I'm going to copy and paste the HTML that I already wrote for this section. And look at that. It did a great job. So I'm going to increase the margin on the bottom, padding on the bottom for this block, and I'm going to save my page again. So we're starting to look good. Form is working. Okay, there's a lot of space there. I'm going to click my edit button. I'm going to back and edit the margins for here. Ah, I see what the problem is here. The height is set to 50%. So it'll show up rendering different when I go and save the page versus when I'm trying to edit the page. I'm going to click this to auto and then save the page again. All right, ah, that's starting to look better. So we'll go back to edit and add our next block. If we go back to how we're going to have the page look at the end, we can see the next block is the same as the first block, only with an image on the right. So one way we can do that is just go back and select our original block and go to the top right of the block's name and hit the duplicate container section. And now I have a duplicate container. And when I select the container, the outermost container, and I hit the down arrow twice, I will be at the bottom of the page. And likewise, if I go and select the image and I click the right arrow, I'll be able to swap left and right so I have a nicer flow to my page. I'll double click the image. and replace the image here. Now I'll just copy and paste from my completed page. And now I want to get started button, so I'll enter get started and highlight that and insert link on the right hand side. Now for the link style and destination, I'm just going to put a pound sign for now, indicating that the link is not going anywhere yet, but you would just copy and paste your URL. The style of the link is just text right now, so I'll select this and go to primary, and I get the button that matches my theme. All right, so the next section is complete, and we'll move on to the fourth section. And now we want to do this value proposition section, and we'll do that by going and scrolling down, going to edit, and finding the feature snippet. We scroll down here, we'll see steps, accordion, ah, features grid. So I have a list of features on the right and a list of features on the left. And if I click this block, you'll see the columns are two. We could also select three columns and have three rows. I don't want that, so I'm going to go to the undo or control Z, command Z on Mac. All right. So I'm just going to copy and paste my headers over here. All right, starting to look good. So the next thing we would want to do is just go and double click these icons so that we can change them. So we might want this search icon and in the setup and configuration, we might want a wrench and in the free web, web page section, we can add one of these little web page documents. So I'm not going to do the right side, but you get the idea. If we wanted to add more here, we could simply go in the right hand side and duplicate the box. So every time we duplicate that box, it'll use the same content that we duplicated and add it to the screen. We'll undo those and save this section. All right, so we're looking pretty good now. We have one final section to add. We'll go ahead and add this section by going back to edit. And instead of copying one of the previous blocks, 
I'll go and select the left image block. And we'll do the same thing. We'll reduce the padding. We'll remove the background. Change the image. And replace the text. And we'll click the button and we'll go and highlight the text and say learn more and here's where we could enter the link for our button uh, we want to also add a button so that the user can go quickly back to the top so we'll say get started we'll highlight that again Oops. and select the link put pound and this time when we put pound we'll put pound top and select primary in the shape we'll say outline and rounded to give it a different appearance than the learn more button so now if we save this and we scroll down our page into the get started when we click it it'll scroll us up to the form so that we can enter our information and get started now the web page is complete it's got its contact acquisition form, and it's got its welcome message for when the contact submits it. Some other things we want to do is send an email to the contact after they submit a form with instructions and expectations. And we might also want to have a separate landing page that people can go to to find more information or FAQs. We're not going to get into that now, but the process would be similar for creating a landing page and in another video, we'll explore how to create autoresponders for your contact forms. Now, this page isn't published yet, so we'll go up on our right-hand side and click Publish from Unpublished. And now our page is live, and if we go to this URL in a new browser window, you'll see our new beautiful landing page is up and running and ready to receive traffic. Now there's one more thing that we have to consider when building landing pages in Odoo, and that's the mobile layout, not just the desktop layout. So mobile layouts can be a little bit more dynamic and have different requirements than the desktops. So let's look at how we can preview what our web app will look like on a mobile device after we've completed our landing page. So if we go up in the top right hand section and click this little mobile preview button, we'll get a look at what our web page looks like on a mobile device. Now it's not going to be 100% how it looks and feels on a mobile device, but it's going to give you a pretty good indication of any aspect, um, aspects of the page that you might need to change. So if we scroll down here, we can say this section is probably a little big on font for mobile, but this falls in nicely and everything kind of lays out well. And if we click get started here, you can see it scrolls us up to the, the top of the page to make it a nice and easy and convenient way to enter the contact information. So now that we have our landing page set up, it's ready to receive traffic and we're ready to market it and receive new clients. So if you enjoyed this video, I hope you like and subscribe to my social media channels and get more information on how making Odoo work for your small or medium-sized business.